bring you long-form public affairs programming from the nation's capital and are a public service of your television provider. C-SPAN, created by cable. Welcome before the committee, uh, General Mattis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Reed. It's an honor to come before you for this confirmation hearing as the President-elect's nominee for the position of Secretary of Defense. I request my written statement be accepted for the record. Without objection. I want to thank all of you on the committee for taking time to see me during my courtesy calls, and I thank you for your willingness to accommodate this hearing and consider my nomination. I have testified previously in front of this committee, and I have always held it in the highest regard. And based on my past year's experience, I do trust this committee and each member of it, and if confirmed, I will demonstrate that trust. I wish to thank former Senator William Cohen for so kindly introducing me this morning, and I'm equally grateful to the long-serving former chairman of the committee, Senator Sam Nunn, for his strong support. It is humbling to be considered for this position, and I thank the President-elect for placing trust and confidence in me. When this unanticipated request came, I was enjoying a full life west of the Rockies. I was not involved in the presidential campaign, and I was certainly not seeking or envisioning a position in any new administration. That said, it would be the highest honor, if I am confirmed, to lead those who volunteer to support and defend the Constitution and to defend our people. All my remarks today recognize that it is only with the advice and consent of the Senate that I can be confirmed. I know the senators of this committee are well aware of the many global security challenges we face. We see each day a world awash in change. Our country is still at war in Afghanistan, and our troops are fighting against ISIS and other terrorist groups in the Middle East and elsewhere. Russia is raising grave concerns on several fronts, and China is shredding trust along its periphery. Increasingly, we see islands of stability in our hemisphere, democracies here in Europe and in Asia under attack by non-state actors and nations that mistakenly see their security in the insecurity of others. Our armed forces in this world must remain the best led, the best equipped, and the most lethal in the world. These demanding times require us to put together a strong national security team here in Washington. If confirmed, I will lead the Department of Defense and be a forthright member of that team. I recognize that I will need to be the strongest possible advocate for military and civilian personnel and their families. I will foster an atmosphere of harmony and trust at the department with our interagency counterparts and the congressional committees. As swiftly as the president-elect's national security team is confirmed, I will work to make sure our strategy and military calculus are employed to reinforce traditional tools of diplomacy, ensuring our president and our diplomats negotiate from a position of strength. In addition to ensuring collaboration across government and the adoption of an integrated strategy, we must also embrace our international alliances and security partnerships. History is clear. Nations with strong allies thrive, and those without them wither. If you confirm me, my watchwords will be solvency and security in providing for the protection of our people and the survival of our freedoms. My priorities as Secretary of Defense will be to strengthen military readiness, strengthen our alliances, and bring business reforms to the Department of Defense. Our military is the envy of the world, representing America's awesome determination to defend herself. Working with you, I will endeavor to keep our unique all-volunteer force second to none. We open the door to all patriots who are eligible and meet the standards, provide them with the training, equipment, and leadership essential to their success, and ensure all service members are treated with dignity and respect. I recognize my potential civilian role differs in essence from my former role in, in uniform. Civilian control of the military is a fundamental tenet of the American military tradition. Both the Commander-in-Chief and the Secretary of Defense must impose an objective strategic calculus in the national security decision-making process and effectively direct its actions. Civilian leaders bear these responsibilities because the esprit de corps of our military, its can-do spirit, and its obedience to civilian leadership 
reduces the inclination and power of the military to oppose a policy if it, it is ultimately ordered to implement. If the Senate consents and if the full Congress passes an exception to the seven-year requirement, I will provide strong civilian leadership of military plans and decisions and the Department of Defense. I recognize under the Constitution it is the Congress that raises, sustains, and supports our armed forces through annual authorizations and appropriations. For many years, I have watched you in action and testified before you. I look forward to collaborating closely for the defense of our nation. I am mindful of the extraordinary privilege it is to be nominated for this position. I will hold service members, civilians, and their families foremost in my thoughts and work to give the department the best chance for victory if you confirm me. Finally, on a personal note, I have worked at the Pentagon twice in my career, but few people may know I'm not the first person in my family to do so. When in the wartime spring of 1942, my mother was 20 years old and working in military intelligence, she was part of the first wave of government employees to move into the still unfinished Pentagon. She had come to America as an infant and lives today on the banks of the Columbia River in the Pacific Northwest. Little could she imagine in her youth that more than 90 years after she immigrated to this country and 75 years after she first walked through the doors of the War Department, one of her sons would be sitting here before you today. Thank you. May I take your questions? General, I neglected. Uh, would you uh, like to introduce members of your family who are here with us today? Thank you, Senator. Uh, they're safely west of the Rockies as well right now. <laughs>